Welcome back to the channel everybody. Today I have this DD15 engine and we are going to do a valve adjustment to this engine. Not this specific engine right here, the engine I'm going to show is going to be later, but basically it's the same. It is the same process for all engines for 2008 all the way to 2023. So it doesn't vary that much. What varies is the actual amount of tolerance that you are going to apply to each valve. And in this case, if you don't have no idea where to find the specifications on the latch adjustment on each ball, you are going to find it right here in the front of the top cover, right? This sticker right here is going to, is going to tell you what is the last that you need. In this case, this one is completely faded. You don't see nothing. So it will be hard to know, but make sure to get these readings right here to get the proper adjustment for your balls. Um, this has different names. It's also called tune-up. It's also called uh, ball adjustment and lash adjustment. But at the end, the purpose is the same. To do this job, first thing is to remove all the top components that are on the truck. So the truck has air filters. It has uh, two bins. It has uh, air compressor lines. Then yeah, they come from the intake of the air filter all the way to the compressor, hoses and stuff like that. So you have to remove all these components to get access to the valve cover. If you don't do that, of course, you won't be able to remove the valve cover. In some trucks, this process is going to be harder than others, depending on your uh, application. If you have a short nose cascadia, it's going to be hard. But if you have a Coronado, it's going to be pretty easy because the engine is pretty much exposed. But anyway, overall, you have to remove all the top components that are on the engine. Once you do that, of course, you can easily remove the valve cover. And as I can demonstrate it on this engine, you can remove it pretty easy and just put it on the side. And then you can have the valve train. This right here is what pushes the valves in and out depending on the uh, needs of the engine. We have one side in its intake, we have the other side in its exhaust. The difference between these is then we have a different adjustment for these two. So this right here requires a lower adjustment and this one requires a higher adjustment. But this will vary depending on the years, depending on the applications. But just be sure to follow the specifications in the bulk cover, as I said before. But now then once this, we have this one exposed, we can see, see this right here, this play, this and this, this is the adjustment then we need to set on the engine. So there is different ways how to do this job. There is a way that you can do it each cylinder. So for example, we are in cylinder number one right now. So both of these intake and exhaust are completely uh, released. So we can do cylinder by cylinder. So we can say cylinder number one, then we can do cylinder number five, then cylinder number, number uh, three, then cylinder number, number six, then cylinder number two, and then cylinder number four. So that will be the firing order of this engine. But if you don't want to do six turns, because in this case we have to rotate the engine once and then rotate the engine again and again and again, you can do it in a different way, which is, uh, I'm not sure the name in English or how it's like, but we can do the, cylinder number one and then cylinder number three and then cylinder number four and that is how it continues anyway uh, this is how we are going to do it. so freeze what we have to do to adjust uh, the uh, latch on this bolt we have to get the uh, cylinder number one um, timing so for that we have to go underneath the engine and just rotate the engine until we get that dot and when, when once we get that dot we actually gonna get uh, cylinder number one, but we have to physically come to the top area of the engine and see, and I have yeah, intake and exhaust then are gonna be free. So that means that we are in the freeze round, the freeze uh, turn of the engine. So uh, cylinder number one, cylinder number uh, exhaust of cylinder number one, exhaust uh, intake of cylinder number one are going to be free. So this is the time then we are going to be adjusting both. And we're gonna set the, uh, the latch on this one by getting this uh, filler gauge and get the measurement, the right measurement that we need. And once we do that, uh, it's pretty easy. I mean, you open the knot and then uh, apply the rotation on the adjuster and then uh, uh, apply the pressure to the filler gauge until the filler gauge is very hard to move, like uh, enough 
opposition to move it but not fairly to go in so it has to be exactly uh, on point and once you get that you get there uh, this is going to be all you have to do and you have to continue on doing that on the other um, rocker arms the adjusters are going to be adjusted to the same way the difference is then as I said before the intake is going to require a different adjustment than the exhaust and the reason why the exhaust require a higher adjustment is because the exhaust balls they tend to get harder because of the high, the hot gases that are traveling to the exhaust area so you need more or you need a la higher lash to maintain that tolerance um, working perfectly in the intake we don't have that uh, issue that's the reason why we need a lower tolerance in the intake and then when we get that then we have to move to the next cylinder and that cylinder will be cylinder number two and cylinder number two we're gonna do intake because the easy way if you don't know which one you have to do you have to look for the free one and in this case as you can see right now we have intakes uh, and exhaust on the cylinder number one and then we have intake on cylinder number two this one is free so now we have to do cylinder number two see exhaust on cylinder number two is tight doesn't move so that's the reason why we cannot do cylinder number two if we are rotating the engine cylinder by cylinder yes of course but in this case we're doing cylinder number one only and then skipping the other um, adjustment to the other valves in this case, we're going to do cylinder number one and in, uh, cylinder number two and intake, free. Then uh, we have to set the adjustment on this one, pretty easy, as I said before. You set the adjustment and everything the same way. The same, you're going to use the same filler gauge and you use the intake number one, same filler gauge for intake number two. Then we're going to skip it to number three on exhaust. See, this one is free. So we do the same. But in this case, we're going to exhaust filler gauge for cylinder number three. This one is free. So we're going to set the adjustment on cylinder number three pretty easy. In cylinder number three, intake is tight because we are the lob of the camshaft. You can get closer here. See this? This is the lob of the camshaft. That right here is going up. So that means that it's getting pressure to the intake valves of cylinder number three. That's the reason why this one doesn't, it doesn't move freely because we have pressure. But in cylinder number three, it is not, it is the looking down, so we don't have that problem. So we do the adjustment on cylinder number three, and then once we do the, the adjustment on cylinder number three, we jump to cylinder number four intake. See, this is the same one, the, in, in the intake, uh, we're going to use the same filler gauge as the number two and number one. After that, we're going to do cylinder number uh, five, exhaust, and this is where we stop. So, see this, we did cylinder number five, cylinder number four, cylinder number three, cylinder number two, and cylinder number one going to rotate the engine and get it to cylinder number six ignition so we're gonna have to rotate the engine 360 degrees until we get to cylinder number six the intake and the exhaust have to be free at the same time just the way as cylinder number one was and uh, once we get there we are going to do the same we are going to set the, the adjustment using the same filler gauge that we use for exhaust and for intakes on all the cylinders. So in this case, once we get uh, to this point, then we are in, this, in the other turn, the other rotation, 360 degrees away from number six, for number one, I'm sorry, uh, we are going to use the opposites. As, as we can remember, we did number Four, number five, exhaust, number four, intake, number three, exhaust, number two, intake, and two uh, of the cylinder number one. So now we're going to do the opposite. Do intake on number five, exhaust on number four, intake on number three, exhaust on number two, and we're done because we already adjust these two. 
but uh, here will be a quick video so you can see the rest of this video is gonna be basically the whole process on how to do the ball adjustment from the start to the end if you wanna see it how it's done here you wanna have the time-lapse video doing the whole process
because this is the whole process on how it's like to do a ball adjustment on your DD15 engine. And as I said before, this process is going to be similar for all engines. It doesn't matter if you have a 2008 DD15 or a 2019 DD15 engine, the process is the same. Also, to DD13s and DD16s, they do accept this process, but the, the lash exactly the large measurement that you're going to use for these engines is going to be different so you always have to refer to the ball cover to be sure which type of filler gauge you're going to use for intake and exhaust depending on your engine just remember that in this case i didn't show you the large adjustment the actual filler gauge thing we're using on this one but remember then this is going to vary. That's the reason why I don't show this because we have different gears of D15 engines. We have different uh, applications of D15 engines. So just remember that. So I always refer, and if your engine doesn't have the tag on the top of the engine on the bar cover, just be sure to uh, get it for somewhere or call uh, research on the internet because I cannot give you the exactly large adjustment that your engine needs because your engine, I don't know what year it is. So be sure to get your engine number or just call the dealer. The dealer can help you too, to get the tag too of your bar cover. But uh, if you wonder what happens when you're done, when you finish your bar adjustment, all you have to do is put everything back the way it was and start your engine. And if the engine doesn't sound right, that means that you did something wrong. So, um, this uh, video is gonna help you on how to do this job if you really want to do it. But if you have no experience on doing this job, don't do it because you can mess up with stuff. So just do this engine if you have any experience working on trucks or if you have any experience working on any type of automotive industries so just uh, prevent problems by being sure that you are capable to this problem and if you wonder what kind of sounds an engine makes when um, a bad adjustment is not done properly you can hear this clip right now <laughs> 